Welcome to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your angel medium, Julie Jancis, and today we're sharing your angel stories. Why do our angels and loved ones above show us signs? Yes, they want us to know they're okay and at peace, but deeper than that, they want us to connect with them so that they can help us more from the other side. Friends, it all begins with your intuition, vibration, and experiencing oneness. Your intuition is your soul's voice. It's also how your loved ones talk to you from heaven. In this podcast, we teach you how to turn up the volume on your intuition so that you can hear their loving messages more clearly. We also teach you how to raise your vibration and feel your oneness with all that is. Friends, you are here to love, give love, receive love, be love, radiate love. And because your soul is love, all you really ever have to do is just be. Hello, beautiful souls. It's Julie, and we are back with Angels and Awakening. I have a very, very special guest for you today. Her name is Ashley Ballou, and she is just one of my favorite, favorite people. She's somebody that I got to know very early on as a client and just very quickly became a friend who I just love and adore. So I was at her salon getting my hair done and she started telling me this angel story. And I'm like, Ashley, you've never told me this before. You have to come on the show. You have to tell your story. So Ashley, take it away. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, well, the last time that you were in, like I was telling you, you know, many years ago, I think I've always been just kind of drawn to this because many years ago, I remember having like a a deja vu, right? You know, like where you feel like you've been somewhere or you've had this dream or you just like know that you know that you know. And I think one of the most powerful ones for me, because I've had a, you know, kind of all throughout my life, and I'm sure everybody's had an experience like that at some point in time. But there was one distinctive one that I was was pretty young, I mean, probably in middle school, and it was a dream that I had a couple of times, and it was, you know, I mean, I guess not a normal dream, but it was one that I didn't forget. And I remember being in a place where I, I knew that I knew everybody there, I knew that I was filled with like I was filled it was in a room and it was filled with lots of love and like I was so like everybody around me I knew it was family and friends and I mean I can remember just kind of like walking through and seeing all these beautiful pictures and like faces that I knew and it was just it it was it was a good feeling and I remember waking up though and always kind of feeling sad about it so one of the other things was I remember in the dream I remember walking into this like room and it wasn't until like I got there did I realize that I was I think at somebody's like wake or funeral service and I see this person on crutches like up at like the front of the casket and it just had a number on the back of his shirt and it was 75 and there was no name or anything like that it looked like a jersey but I couldn't really tell And I think that's kind of like why I was sad when I woke up because I knew that it was like a a service of some sort for somebody. And I kind of always wondered, like, was it somebody that I knew or what? And years later, probably, probably 10 years later or so, eight to 10 years later, there was, you know, I mean, fast forward 10 years, right? And, you know, from eight to like, I don't know, maybe 18 or like seven to 17, something like that. And, you know, in high school and, you know, just living life. And my brother is a couple of years older than me and he was an athlete. And, you know, we had lots of mutual friends and, you know, we were all like my friends and his friends, like, I mean, I'm one of four. So like, and we're all really close. So like growing up, all of our friends were pretty close too. So he had a dear friend that our whole family was close to. He was just like another sibling. You know, it was, we were all very close. He was, you know, in classes with me in school. Like, 
you know, he was just this really vibrant, vibrant human being. Like he was, he was awesome. Everybody, everybody in school knew him. Like, you know, he was really active in the community. So was his family. You know, I think his brother was my age. Like his mother was a teacher. Everybody, just everybody knew this family and and loved them. I mean, they were, they're incredible. And so there was a turn of events where Unfortunately, one morning he did not wake up and, you know, it was just this, it was just a horrible, horrible day. I will, I mean, I'll never forget, like, luckily my brother, I remember going to school and finding out and it was just, it was awful. And I remember thinking, thank goodness my brother didn't go to school today because he, he was in football, he tore his ACL, he had surgery. And so he, you know, he wasn't there. And I remember thinking, you know, thank goodness he's not. I mean, because this is a horrible thing to walk into. And so then, you know, fast forward to the services. The day of the wake comes and my whole family, me and my mom, my dad, my sisters, my cousins, my, you know, our friends, like we all, you know, we all decide like what time we're going to go and and whatnot. And so we get there and it's just, you know, this, this, this guy was so involved in the community and so was his family. So there's just this huge mass of people. I mean, a line just out the door and around and like, it it was, we were like, okay, like, where, where did we get in line, you know? And I think it was like one of our cousins or a friend of ours came out and like got saw that we were there and got our family and like took us in and I remember walking in and I remember like something like 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 the like the hair on the back of my neck just stood up and I'm like oh my gosh like I've been here before and I look over and I'm like I'm in that place where I'm filled I'm like I'm in this room filled with people and I know that I know them all and I realize that they're friends and they're you know people you know I've gone to school with and you know it's my our community and you know and then I remember looking at like the collages and things like that I'm like oh my gosh like I remember that feeling of like knowing and like loving like loving this 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 guy he was you know I mean like I said he was like family and so it was just like a really eerie feeling but it wasn't until like I went I walked into like the back of the room where the casket actually was and at that point in time my brother was at the front of the room and now this is his best friend and he was on crutches because you know he had just had this you know knee surgery and his football number was 75 and that year there was something happened in in like I think the the football in football where they didn't have the names on the back of their jerseys they took them off for some reason or another and so it was just their numbers and I just remember standing there like I cannot believe like that I've been here before like of all people and of all like like this is this is my dream like I I've I have seen all of this before I have felt all of this before and I that was it was it I think in that moment that I was just like I realized like wow there's something so much bigger than all of us so yeah wow Mm -hmm. wow 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 I've got a few announcements. This month's winner of the drawing is Mackenzie Payne, who gets one free session with me. Email me a screenshot of your five-star positive review on Apple Podcasts, Google Business, or my Facebook page for your chance to win next month. Details are in the show notes. Friends, in the Angel membership in June 2021, Archangel Raphael and I are teaching you Self Energy Healing 101 and Chakras 101. You'll learn how to give yourself an energy healing session, techniques to keep your energy clear, and how you can heal your own energy field. To join this course live or replay at any time, sign up for the Angel Membership Program today. Also, a new class of the Angel Reiki School begins on June 1st. 
join this separate program to develop your unique spiritual gifts and become an angel Reiki master. I'm still offering private readings. To book one, sign up for our weekly angel email. Once a month, you'll get an email that contains a link to book your session online. One more thing, I am loving spending time with you live and answering your questions over on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Follow me on social and our newly launched YouTube channel for tons of new video content. Thanks for your support and for sharing this podcast with your people. I think it's fascinating because you're not the first person who's like told me about a situation like this where you have a dream and then, you know, years later, sometimes it comes to fruition. I don't think it means that every single dream is going to be that way. So the mamas who are worried, who's like, I just had a bad dream about this happening last night, please like don't worry yourself. But there are times where I believe spirit comes in to prepare our hearts in some way, maybe for something that's going to be very emotionally heavy for us to go through so that sort of on a subconscious level, we're able to process a bit in advance and not maybe have as big of a heartache or maybe even sometimes a psychological break with stories I've heard in the past when everything does unfold. So just so fascinating. Ashley has another story for us. Thanks, Julie. There was another instance. This was definitely a little bit more recently in life. My grandfather and I were, my dad's dad, we were really, really close he was just an incredible influence and amazing guy in my life. Like just, you know, salt of the earth, great man, right? Hilarious, loving, like loved his family. So I think it was in my late 20s. I remember like joking around with him one day and he used to tell me, he's like, well, I will stick around, you know, I'm getting old, but I will stick around until you're married. I'm like, all right, cool. Then I know you're going to be around a while because I got a little while, right? <laughs> So, I mean, that was, yeah, like I said, my late 20s and, you know, fast forward how many years. It was probably, I don't know, or maybe that was like my mid-20s. But by my late 20s, he, I remember him asking me, you know, Ash, like, you know, I love my wife because my grandmother had passed at 62. And so my grandfather, by the age of 70, you know, had found love again and, you know, remarried this wonderful woman. And they had this incredible life together. And he used to, you know, he used to tell me all the time, I love my wife. I'm so grateful I found her and I have her. And he goes, but your grandmother was my soulmate. Like she was just my soul. Like she was my soulmate, my first love. Right. And so he used to tell me like, you know, can we, or he used to ask me, can we like renegotiate that? (laughs) And I'm like, well, I mean, okay, all right. I mean, what are you thinking? And he's like, I, you know, I don't really know. And again, I'm like, okay, hang out until my golden birthday. You know, I, I turned 31 on the 31st of January. Like, you have to hang out until then. And then his birthday is like the 20 or the 21st of February. So he's laughing. He's like, okay, done. You know, and I'm like, well, you should probably hang out a little longer than that, but, you know, at least till then. And he's like, deal we'll shake on it you know he loved like like every like probably every friday at four o'clock he would call me for i don't know how many years and he would just say cheers or you know i love you because he would make one manhattan like and fridays at four o'clock and sometimes i would be there with him to do it sometimes i wouldn't but that was just like his thing that was like his his thing for the week so you know and he's you know into his 80s now and you know i remember like my birthday rolled around and he called me and we talked and, you know, I had, I had plans to go out like that weekend or whatever. And he would ask me, what are you doing? You know? And I'm like, Oh, I'm going out. He's like, okay, we'll come over week this weekend have Manhattan. You know, I'm like, okay, sure. You know? And, uh, you know, I just said, I love you. Thank you. Have, you know, happy birthday. Love you too. You know? And then the next day I was out, I was out with, I think my my boyfriend at the time and we 
we were, I think we had gone out to dinner and then we had gone to a bar and I remember going to the, use the restroom and I had all these phone calls that I had missed and they were my sister and my mom and my aunt. And I just knew I'm like, okay. And sure enough, I get a voicemail, I get all of them. And then, you know, I go back out and I'm like, you know, I think I need to go. And he's like, okay, you know, I tell him what happened. So he's like, okay, we'll, we'll go immediately. And it's the middle of a blizzard. And I, I remember I remember thinking like, okay, you know what? I think I want to go have a Manhattan. Like before I go home, I, I just, I want to go have a Manhattan. So we stop at this little bar by my house that I'd been to a couple of times, but it was just right there. And we walked in, we sat down at the bar. I ordered like a Manhattan and then like, two shots of like Johnny Walker or something. And so he, he was like, I'm going to go to use the restroom. I'm like, okay. And I'm sitting there and I look over and there's this woman sitting there with a drink. And I'm like, what are you drinking? And she just looks at me and she's like, it's a perfect Manhattan. And it's the same drink that we, that he would make every week. And I was just like, Hmm, you know, like, okay. And she just looks at me And she was like, she like cocks her head and she looks at me and she goes, you know, everything's okay, right? And, and I just look at her and I'm like, how, like, you know, because I'm in such a fog of like, you know, grief, like of everything that's just happened. And I'm like, how does she even know? Like, how does she even know what to say? Or like, does she even, you know, this is crazy. And then she just looks at me and she was like, my name's Angel. And, you know, at that time, like, my boyfriend comes back from the bathroom, and I'm just, like, still, in, like, in awe. And, you know, I, I, we take our shot, I get my drink, we start chatting, you know, she tells me, you know, like, we just start kind of, like, having small talk, and, you know, turns out she's, like, my neighbor, and she's like, oh, you know, like, we should exchange numbers, we can hang out, la da da I'm like, okay, you know, like, okay, I'm in a new friend. So I, like, pull up my cell phone, you know, I just, like, dial her number, her phone rings, like okay, a couple more days go by or maybe like a week or so or whatnot. And I'm like, I should, you know, see what my new friend is up to. And I called the number has never, it was like not in service, or not, not that it wasn't in service, but it was like one of those messages where you get like the number doesn't exist. And I'm just like, but I, I know that like I called her, like I, I like I, I saw her like look at her phone and everything. So it was just it was one of those wild things. I just think it was like, you know, his way of letting me know that he was okay. Wow. And the day that he had passed was the day after my birthday. It was February first. After your thirty first birthday. It was the day after my thirty first birthday. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. You never told me that story before either. That was another one that I was just like, he was always a man of his word and he kept it. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, and there, there are just so many stories, you know, and I love and just eat up every yummy one of them because they are angel moments. Those are real life angel moments. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, Ashley, thank you so, so much for being here. Oh my gosh, Julie, thank you. I, you know, I love getting to hang. I love getting to see you and, you know, it's always a pleasure. So thank you so much. Oh, of course. Beautiful souls, I'm so excited to announce that my book on angels and how they're working miracles in your life will be available on Amazon fall of 2021. If you're listening on or after fall of 2021, check it out. Friends, if you'd like to work with me each week, my angel membership program is perfect for you. You can join at any time and you get access to past courses. In 2021, I'll be teaching you about a new topic each month. We started the year in February with a course on oneness and raising your vibration. March is angel communication, how to hear your angels. April is trusting your intuition. May is knowing your soul's purpose. June is working with Archangel Raphael to learn self-energy healing techniques and chakras 101. 
July is rewriting the stories you've been holding on to. August is all about rewiring your mind to move past blocks. September is energetically working through ancestral trauma. October is working with your inner child and Archangel Michael. November is a guide to being an empath. Then we're rounding out the year with a course in December that helps you connect with your loved ones on the other side to help you deepen your personal connection with them. And in January 2022, we'll be back with a whole new course on manifestation and co-creation. You get all of this live group access to me, two new pre-recorded Reiki healings, an advance notice to book a session with me when you're an angel member. Sign up for the angel membership anytime. If you're listening in 2022, please know that we're planning to add new content each month. For details and to sign up, view the show notes below. Friends, the only thing that's not included in the angel membership right now is the Angel Reiki School, where you learn to develop your unique spiritual gifts. Whereas the angel membership is about your awakening journey and your personal spiritual growth, the Angel Reiki School, on the other hand, certifies you as an Angel Reiki Master Teacher and teaches you the art of energy healing and bringing through messages for your clients. Friends, if you're feeling called to the Angel Reiki School, it's because the souls you're here to help on earth, well, they're omnipresent piece of them. You know, their higher selves on the other side. That's what's behind you, pushing you, fueling you to become who you're meant to be. Because when you do, they know your work will shift the trajectory of their life here. That's what I mean when I say you have big, big purpose in this lifetime. A new class of the Angel Reiki School starts on the first of each month. Speaking of the Angel Reiki School, we're going to need about 800 volunteers this year. We select volunteers from people who've written a five-star positive review and emailed us a copy. That way, we have a way of contacting you for your free volunteer session. Many of you have asked if I'm still booking sessions, and the answer to that is yes. I love, love, love my sessions with you. We have a new system where we send out an email once a month with a link to my calendar for you to book online. It's really easy. All you have to do is sign up to be on my email list on my website, theangelmedium.com. I've been spending a ton of time going live with you on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and I'm having a blast with it. Join me over on social and our newly launched YouTube channel for tons of new content, teaching videos, and actual video footage of these podcast episodes. Friends, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much for being part of this community and listening to this show. I truly feel that this is your show and the angel show, and I just feel so blessed to be a part of it. You're the most supportive community a podcaster could have. I pray for you every day. If you have a special prayer request, you can submit it through my website homepage and I'll be praying for you personally. Now for the oneness meditation, which is the last five minutes of every episode. And as you do this meditation, you'll raise your vibration and the vibration of the planet. Friends, what I want you to do is to just get into a relaxed position. If you are driving, operating machinery, need to concentrate, then this meditation is not for you. But anyone who is able to focus their attention on it, please join me. Friends, I want you to start by taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And I want you to imagine that your socks, your shoes are off and that your bare feet are able to connect with the soil of the earth. 
and down through the bottom, the soles of your feet are these large roots that go down far and wide into the earth. Those roots go down far and wide, anchoring you into the earth as if you were a tree yourself. And up through those roots comes this beautiful, yummy, tingly energy. It begins to tingle at the tip of your toes. I want you to allow this yummy, tingly energy to just dance up over your feet, around your ankles. Feel this yummy, tingly energy as it moves up over your calves, your shins, all the way up to your knees. Feel this energy at your knees and allow it to move up the thighs, the hamstrings all the way up to the sides of the hips. I want you to allow this energy to move from the hips up to the base of your spine, the base of your stomach. And I want you to feel this energy as it climbs up the spine and the stomach all the way up until it reaches your heart. surrounding the outside of your heart, filling the inside of your heart. Notice how your entire body comes into a gentle state of ease. Allow this energy to move up into the shoulders, into the neck. Feel it as it fills your entire head front to back, side to side, top to bottom. And then feel this energy as it moves through the hair follicles on the top of your head so that you feel this yummy tingliness two inches to ten feet or higher above the top of your head. Friends, you might feel like there's a string above your head lifting you up towards the sky. You might feel an airy floatiness. You might feel an expansive spaciousness. What I want you to do from here is imagine that there is this large opening at the crown of your head. It's the size of a cereal bowl, right? And I want you to imagine that it extends upwards towards heaven and that God sends this loving, peace-filled oneness energy. It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's bliss, it's ease, it's grace. And God just sends this energy through the crown of your head. It moves through your head, down through your neck, down through your shoulders, and it starts to pool. This God energy starts to pool around your heart, within your heart. And I just want you to feel that for a moment. And I want you to just tap in and notice. I want you to notice that your heart, your physical heart, is one with your body. And I want you to notice that your heart and your body are one with the air surrounding you. that your heart, your body, the air surrounding you are one with all life here on earth, all plants, all people, all animals, all life on earth. And now notice how your heart, body, air surrounding you, all life here on earth, everything everywhere. 
Did you notice how your body got more expansive? Your energy got more expansive. And you could feel out into your auric field. You could feel out into the energy of the world, into the energy of everything everywhere. Friends, that is oneness. And you can carry oneness with you in your every day. I don't want you to stop here. I don't want you to open up your eyes. I want you to continue this meditation and to see that surrounding you are angels. You have guardian angels around you. You have cherub angels holding the space open for you to get into oneness at any time. You have archangels working with you in every area of your life. You have loved ones on the other side. See them. See them in detail, friends, because you seeing them in detail is the exact same thing as you going to them on the other side, knocking on their door, asking them to spend time with you. They love you so incredibly much. They want to spend time with you. They want to develop that relationship with you. When they're there, you're here. I know it's different, but you can still have that beautiful, incredible relationship. All of these beings, your angels, your guides, your loved ones on the other side, they form your spirit team who's always working to guide you, direct you, protect you. Friends, what I want you to do is just take some time with them right here, right now. What they want you to know is that they are working with you all the time. What they want you to know is that they are sending you signs and symbols to show you that they're next to you. Friends, they ask you to see that they are bringing in gift after gift after gift through your heart chakra to bless your life with miracles. Friends, it's your job to remain open, to believe, and to trust that they are working miracles in your life. Friends, I love you. They love you so incredibly much. Stay open and know, believe, trust, have faith, know like you know like you know that they are working with you always. See you here next time. Have a blessed day.